the realm. Do you know what the realm is? It's the thousand blades of Aegon's enemies. A story we agree to tell each other over and over till we forget that it's a lie. What's up ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for another Game of Thrones and A Song of Ice and Fire video. Alright my friends, in this video, I want to go over some of the recently released information from James Andrew Miller's new book that reveals some very interesting details about what happened behind the scenes at HBO. Now, as you all know, Game of Thrones had one of the most divisive finales in television history after ending the series after only 8 seasons. If any of you have seen some of my other videos, or George R. R. Martin's infamous red carpet interview, then you would know that he has said Game of Thrones could have went on for many, many more seasons. As a matter of fact, he said Game of Thrones could have filmed for 13 or 14 more seasons if they would have directly followed his books. Why is it ending? Uh, I don't know. Ask Dave and Dan when they come through. Um, we could have gone to 11, 12, 13 seasons, but uh, they... I guess they wanted a life. Uh, <laughs> so you wanted it to keep going. Well, it, it, you know, if you've read the, my novels, you, you know there was enough material for, for more seasons. Uh, they made certain cuts, um, but, but that's fine. We have five other shows, five prequels in development that are based on other periods in the history of Westeros. Some of them just 100 years before Game of Thrones. Some of them 5,000 years before Game of Thrones. And I'm working on other projects. Uh, Nettie and I are working on a book together. This is uh, Nettie Okorafor. She wrote an amazing book called Who Fears Death that uh, HBO has optioned. So I'm an executive producer on that, and we're developing that to be, I hope, the, one of the next big HBO fantasy series. Now, did you know Game of Thrones would be ending with this season, or did they call you and say, hey, let's have a chat? Um, David and Dan... Um, have been saying for, yeah, like five years that seven seasons was all they would go. And we, we got them to go to eight, but uh, <laughs> not any more than that. So, uh, yeah, I had a custom, a custom that. There was a period like five years ago where they were saying seven seasons and I was saying ten seasons. And, uh, you know, they won. They're the ones actually working on it. So. Is there a character that you would love to see a spinoff with? No, I, I'm committed to these prequels. I mean, I think this story ends when it ends. And I know all the actors, as great as they are, all the actors are anxious to get on and play other roles. They don't want to spend their entire lives playing one role. And that's fine. I mean, they're, it, it's great. They're, we had such an amazing cast. I mean, not only the people here tonight, but some of the people who couldn't make it, like Maisie Williams, Sophie Turner, Sibel Kelly, um, you know, uh, Mark Addy, who played Robert in the first thing. Great, great, great cast. I was honored to work with them. Now, the one thing that I did not know is what actually happened behind the scenes. James Andrew Miller's new book reveals that George R. R. Martin actually begged HBO to make more seasons of Game of Thrones, but the showrunners David and Dan said no. Now, according to George R. R. Martin's agent, he said that George would fly to New York to have lunch with one of HBO's executives to beg him to do 10 seasons, with the same number of episodes because there was more than enough material for it. He also said it would be a more satisfying and more entertaining experience. Although Miller and HBO's executives would have loved to have more seasons of the series, the show's showrunners David Benioff and Dan Weiss did not want to do this. Dan and Dave were exhausted, and rightfully so, Martin's agent describes in Miller's book. They were done, and they wanted to move on, so they cut it short, and then negotiations became, how many more seasons can we stretch this out? Because of course HBO wanted more. He continued, George loves Dan and Dave, but after season 5, he did start to worry about the direction they were going in because George obviously knows where the story goes. He started saying, you're not following my direction. They were not following A Song of Ice and Fire. Now, the novels on which Game of Thrones is based on, A Song of Ice and Fire, is not yet finished, which may be why Martin was reluctant to have the series end after only eight seasons. George has released the first five out of seven novels and is continuing to write The Winds of Winter, which he has been writing for over a decade, he describes in the book. I wish it had run for ten years, Martin said in the book. I think that would have given us a little more time in the later seasons to end it. However, that might be just because I'm trying to still end it myself. I'm working on The Winds of Winter even now, as I have been for the best part of a decade, the author continues. And hopefully I'm going to get to that ending soon, and then the fans can argue about which ending they like better. 
Now, I don't exactly know how all of you feel about this, but I think it's upsetting, knowing that the creator of this amazing universe had to beg HBO for more seasons. No one, and I mean no one, knows this saga better than George, and he knew they would need more seasons to ensure that the fans were given a more satisfying ending. But then for Dan and Dave to not follow through with this is a slap in the face if you ask me. I guess I will never understand why HBO did not hand over the reins to someone else who was willing to end it the way that they wanted. I think Dan and Dave should have honored George R. R. Martin's wishes by handing it over themselves. I also find it a little hard to believe that George R. R. Martin still has love for Dan and Dave after how everything ended. At least not the same love that he had for them when they were heading into the series from day one. Not only did George stop working on the show, but he even stopped watching it. Now, he said he stopped watching it because he was writing The Winds of Winter, but that isn't exactly what happened either. Now, if you go back and look at his social media, you can see that he would discuss other shows even while Game of Thrones was on the air, making it very clear, at least for me, that he had some sort of falling out with David and Dan. I think something happened behind the scenes that fractured their relationship, and we can all assume that it was most likely over creative differences, but at the end of the day, what do I know? I wasn't there, and this is only my perspective as an outsider. I just hope that one day we will find out what actually happened because I don't think we have been given the full story yet. So long as HBO is still handing George millions of dollars, he will never fully speak his mind on the situation. But maybe someone else who was working with him on the show will eventually. Now, there is some more very interesting information that was also revealed in this book that I will be discussing in my next video. Hopefully, I will see all of you here for that one as well. As always, let me know what all of you think about this new information. What do you think HBO should have done with Game of Thrones before it ended? Should they have let Dan and Dave end it early like they did? Or should they have found someone else to end the show the way that George wanted? Leave your thoughts down below. I want to thank everyone for watching. I will see you again very soon. Bye.